Adding fluoride to public drinking water has been a standard practice in the United States for over seven decades. This was first introduced in 1945, and it was a public health initiative that was designed to reduce tooth decay and improve oral health. Fluoride, a naturally occurring compound, strengthens tooth enamel and makes it more resistant to decay. It was initially hailed as a breakthrough in preventive health care, with numerous studies showing a significant reduction in cavities among populations with fluoridated water. However, recent studies have raised new concerns about the long-term effects of fluoride exposure, particularly for children. And with mounting evidence suggesting potential risks, it's worth asking, is fluoridating public drinking water still a good idea? Now, in the mid 20th century, scientists discovered that people living in areas with naturally fluoridated water had fewer cavities. The connection between fluoride and dental health led to the decision to add fluoride to the public water supplies in the United States. The first large scale fluoridation occurred in Grand Rapids, Michigan in 1945. And by 2006, roughly 70% of the US population had access to fluoridated water. Fluoride compounds are typically added to drinking water in the form of sodium fluoride, sodium fluorosilicate, or fluorosilic acid. These chemicals are mixed into water at treatment plants using uh, metering pumps to ensure precise dosing. According to the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, the recommended fluoride concentration is about 0.7 milligrams per liter. And this is a level believed to balance cavity prevention with safety. The primary goal of water fluoridation is to reduce dental caries or cavities by strengthening tooth enamel. Research conducted in the 1940s suggested that fluoride concentrations of about one milligram per liter were associated with a notable decrease in tooth decay. Subsequent studies have supported this, showing that fluoridated water can reduce cavities in children by as much as 30% compared to children who do not consume fluoridated water. Now, while fluoride in drinking water played a major role in improving oral health in the 20th century, it's important to recognize that dental care has evolved significantly since then. The widespread availability of fluoride toothpaste, which has been a standard part of dental hygiene since the 1950s, and regular dental checkups have significantly reduced the need for supplemental fluoride. By the 1990s, more than 90% of toothpaste sold in the US contained fluoride. And most people now use other sources of fluoride, such as mouth rinse and dental gels. So despite the benefits of fluoride in preventing tooth decay, recent studies have raised concerns about the potential health risks of long-term fluoride exposure. Mm -hmm. A 2025 meta-analysis published in JAMA found that high fluoride exposure is associated with lower IQ scores in children. The study concluded that increased fluoride levels, especially in drinking water, could negatively impact cognitive development with a clear dose-response relationship between fluoride exposure and IQ reduction. This issue is particularly troubling because young children are more vulnerable to the effects of excessive fluoride exposure. And fluoride can accumulate in the body over time. And children who drink more water relative to their body weight may be at higher risk of accumulating higher levels of fluoride in their system. Now, beyond potential cognitive effects, fluoride exposure in high amounts can lead to a variety of other health issues as well. One of the most common consequences is dental fluorosis, a condition caused by excessive fluoride intake during the formation of the permanent teeth. Now, fluorosis manifests as white spots or streaks on the teeth and in more severe cases can lead to tooth discoloration and surface damage. While dental fluorosis is mostly a cosmetic uh, concern, it serves as an indicator of too much fluoride. More serious conditions arise with prolonged exposure to high levels of fluoride, particularly in bones. So skeletal fluorosis, a condition that affects bones and joints, can result in symptoms like stiffness, pain, and even changes to bone structure, leading to osteoporosis and arthritis. Chronic fluoride toxicity can also contribute to joint pain and, of course, reduces the bone density, which makes bones more susceptible to fractures. Pregnant women may also be at heightened risk. Recent studies have suggested that excessive fluoride exposure during pregnancy can negatively affect fetal brain development. One study showed that pregnant women with high levels of fluoride in their urine had children whose IQs were on average five points lower than those of children born to mothers with lower fluoride exposure. Interestingly, many countries around the world have opted not to fluoridate their drinking water, yet they report similar or even better dental health outcomes than fluoridated regions in the United States. For example, Germany has stopped fluoridating its drinking water in the 1970s, yet it has a lower incidence of dental caries compared to 
the United States. Other European nations such as uh, Sweden, the Netherlands and France also do not fluoridate their water, yet they experience no significant dental health issues. In contrast, some studies that continue to fluoridate their water like Canada, Australia and Ireland still see the same patterns of tooth decay that were prevalent before fluoridation was introduced. Now, this has led some experts to question the necessity of fluoridating water in today's world, especially with the availability of fluoride in other forms like toothpaste and mouthwash. Given the concerns about fluoride's potential risk and the availability of alternative sources of fluoride, the question remains, is fluoridating public water supplies still necessary? The growing concerns about fluoride exposure coupled with the availability of other sources of fluoride suggests that water fluoridation may no longer be necessary. In fact, it may be time to reconsider whether this well-intended intervention is doing more harm than good. So what can you do if you want to avoid fluoride in your drinking water? Well, the simple solution here is a reverse osmosis filter, as it will take out over 90% of fluoride from your water. And again, with continued uh, toothbrushing with fluoride toothpaste, you will get sufficient fluoride in to strengthen the tooth enamel. So I don't think this is a concern anymore. I think this is one of the very well intended interventions that we have made in nature, especially with a very simple and uh, daily nutrient we consume like water. And it's time to really stop messing with nature and just you know take these things out of there. I think it's not necessary anymore. By comparison, other countries may be even doing better without it. So I think this is one of the things where we can save money and potentially also improve our health.